Hi guys, I'm Belle and today I'm going to be sharing my top 10 favorite Disney restaurants with you. So if you don't know me, I'm Belle, like I said, I am a Disney fanatic, Disney World especially. I've been to Disney several times and I'm always the person in my family to book everything. Whenever we go to Disney World, they don't even always know what we're doing that day because my family has always just put Disney in my hands and trusted me with it because they know I know almost everything Disney has to offer and all the best things. So because I've been several times and I'm always the person that books it for my family, I do know a lot about Disney and I do know a lot about what we like and enjoy and what we don't like and enjoy and it's typically the same for everyone. Most people enjoy a lot of the same places and things to do at Disney and a lot of people don't like certain things and I know most of those. So today I'm going to be sharing our, my top 10 favorite Disney restaurants. I've eaten at over 20 different restaurants. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it's I always try to hit the most popular restaurants. So some of mine aren't restaurants that people would typically say they're favorites, but I'm going to explain why I love each and every restaurant on this list. A lot of times I've eaten at these restaurants more than once, so that's why it may seem like 20 plus restaurants isn't that many but when you're only going for five days something like that you gotta think most people might eat like a light lunch and eat dinner so you might only eat out once a day so to go and have over 20 different restaurants that I've tried is a lot because we've usually eaten at most of these like at least twice so Without further ado, I'm going to share my top 10 favorite Disney restaurants and explain why. I'm going to start from the bottom. So my number 10 is Grand Floridian Cafe. Me and my family ate at the Grand Floridian Cafe two times ago that we went and I enjoyed it. It wasn't anything special. Obviously, it's in the Grand Floridian, which is one of the biggest, most expensive Disney resorts. And that's really the main reason I wanted to go there. I've always loved how the Grand Fl Floridian looked. So I wanted to really go see it and check it out. And I decided to book a dinner there in order to do that. The food was good. It wasn't anything crazy. Um, I, I mean, it was really good food, but just nothing really stuck out to me to where I don't know if I would eat there again maybe if something like came up but I, I'm definitely not planning on it I'm not dying to go there I mainly only went there to go to the Grand Floridian so that's number 10 on my list it was very good there's nothing special about the atmosphere but it was a really good chance for me to see the Grand Floridian okay number nine on my list is the Crystal Palace which is in Magic Kingdom I ate here one time with my family again. It wasn't the best food. The Crystal Palace is a buffet style uh, restaurant. So the food really didn't stick out to me. The atmosphere is gorgeous. It's beautiful, bright white, and has lots of windows. It's gorgeous, but the food is just not it. If you're going to Disney to have amazing food, the Crystal Palace isn't somewhere where I would eat. We only went to the Crystal Palace because that's where you can actually meet Winnie the Pooh and friends. And we really wanted to meet them. So you meet Winnie the Pooh, Eeyore, Tigger, and Piglet. It was really cool meeting them and like getting to take pictures and with, with them and stuff. That was really the only reason we wanted to go. It wasn't for the food. So because of that, it did make it on my list because if you have kids and stuff, it would be really good to eat there. And I'm sure you would still enjoy it. The food wasn't bad, but it's really just a good chance to meet the characters. Number eight on my list is Chef Mickey's. Chef Mickey's is in the Contemporary Resort, which is right next to Magic Kingdom. It's the resort that has the monorail driving through it. I was really excited to eat at Chef Mickey's because like I said, the monorail goes through it, so we rode the monorail to Chef Mickey's, which that was my first time ever riding the monorail. I never really had a reason to ride the monorail, so I booked Chef Mickey's. I heard a lot of good things about it. Again, it is a buffet-style restaurant, 
at Chef Mickey's you meet Mickey and friends. So that's another reason it's on my list is I think it's really good if you have young kids going. Me and my sister were like, I was like 17 and she was 13 and we really did still enjoy it and meeting the characters and stuff. It's a good chance to get pictures with the characters if you just, there's certain characters you want to meet and all. You can take pictures with them, all of them come to your table, you get a few minutes with them, say hi, take your pictures, and then you go back to eating and a few minutes later another character comes along. The food, again, wasn't amazing, it was a buffet, it was good, I did enjoy it, but again, if you're going to Disney, really wanting to enjoy good food and you're not caring as much about characters and stuff like that, I wouldn't recommend Chef Mickey's. It's more just to meet the characters and enjoy yourself and have fun. Okay, number seven on my list is 50's Primetime Cafe. This restaurant is in Hollywood Studios. It's one of the more popular restaurants. A lot of people eat at 50's Primetime. Basically, it's just a diner that's styled like the 50's and even the servers act like they're in the 50's. It's a very home style type restaurant. Um, in fact, the servers have a certain title. So for example, it's supposed to kind of seem like you're at home. So it's themed like a house in the 50s and the servers are like your family. So for example, one of our servers one time, he called himself Cousin Ryan. They do things like that or you might have like uncle someone, aunt someone, grandma someone, like they give themselves a title as if they're part of your family to make you feel like you're really getting a full experience. That I thought was really cool. Me and my sister really enjoyed it. Cousin Ryan was hilarious. He messed with us a lot. It's a really good place to go to get like a laugh, but they also, another reason I enjoy them is 50's Primetime does have very good food. We've been twice and once I got fried chicken with mashed potatoes and it was very good. And then the last time I got chicken pot pie. And the food is very like home style, like, like your mama cooked it and it's very good. I really love home style food so because of that, that's why it's number seven on my list. And I do recommend going here not only because the food's good, but also I feel like everyone will enjoy it, even kids, because the servers are so funny and they mess with you a lot, especially kids. They like to make them laugh and all, so it's definitely a restaurant I recommend. Number six on my list is Whispering Canyon. Whispering Canyon is in the Wilderness Lodge, which is, again, another resort owned by Disney. Whispering Canyon is known for the servers being rude to you. So if you go there, you definitely have to expect a lot of sarcasm and almost like them attacking you, not like physically, but like verbally. They're not gonna be like rude and insulting, but they're very sarcastic and like they act aggravated and like they don't wanna deal with you. But to me and my family, we think that sort of stuff is very funny. So we really enjoyed it. They mess with kids and stuff a lot, especially like the 50s primetime cafe. So for an example, um, my f whole family ate there years ago and my sister ordered a steak and it came with green beans and she only ate the steak. She didn't touch the green beans. She must've been like 11. The server came by and told her to eat her greens or she was going to get in trouble and my sister did not want to eat her greens. A few minutes later they came and they put a jail cell in front of my sister. It's like this big thing with like bars and stuff to where you can't get out unless you like do what they say I guess but for her it was eat her vegetables. Another thing they did was my sister asked for a refill on her coke the waitress got like an attitude and like took the thing off the table a minute later she comes back with a humongous drink and was like is this enough for you like they have huge cups um that she put so much drink in which is kind of wasteful but it was very funny uh they just make you enjoy yourself a lot and also the food at Whispering Canyon is delicious. It's 
barbecue style food. They also have steaks, like stuff like that, like barbecue, steak, a lot of meat, pulled pork, mashed potatoes. It's that style of food and it's all delicious. Really enjoy it there, but we've been there several times, like several, several times. So the last time we went, we decided not to go. We wanted to try something new, but I highly recommend Whispering Canyon for both the food and the atmosphere. Number five on my list is Coral Reef. Coral Reef is in Epcot. I think it's a really cute restaurant. I actually only ate here one time. My family wasn't too crazy about it, but I'm someone who really enjoys atmospheres of restaurants. It's not just about like the food. So I really enjoyed Coral Reef because it's like a huge aquarium. Because of this, I think kids, again, would really enjoy it. There's fish everywhere, like the whole, there's a whole wall that's just an aquarium. So while you're eating, like you can just see fish swimming around you. It's designed to be like Finding Nemo, obviously. The food was also really good. Um, we all like got steaks. They were so good. Then again, all the steaks in Disney World are good. But the food is really good. Most of the restaurants in Epcot can be considered kind of weird or like outgoing food because most of them are just when you're going around the world. This is one of them that's more just like American style food and it'd be really good for kids, especially because of the fish in the aquarium. Number four on my list is Le Cellier. I don't know if that's how you say it. Le Cellier is in Epcot. I believe it's Canada. Um, the only thing I have to warn about Le Cellier before I go on is that it does take two credits. Which that's something I didn't mention is that my family, we always get the Disney dining plan, which means that we have credits for our meals. Basically, we just pay for our meals ahead of time so that we don't have to worry about spending money like crazy while we're there. The problem with Le Cellier and a reason a lot of people don't go there is because it takes two Disney credits. So when we did eat there, we had to use two nights worth of credits to eat there and then when we ate at a restaurant the next day we had to pay out of pocket for it. So you do need to be careful of that. However, obviously it's a steakhouse and it's Disney and it's from is in the Canada part. So it was very good. My steak was delicious. If you're paying out of pocket if you don't get the dining plan, it will be expensive, but it was really good. Again, if this is one of those places if you're going to Disney for the food, which actually a lot of people do do, this is a place that's really good, especially if you love steak. It's a very high-end restaurant and it's so good. Number three on the list, we're getting up there. Number three is Be Our Guest. Be Our Guest is an amazing restaurant if you love good atmosphere. Be Our Guest obviously is from Beauty and the Beast. It's the song, Be Our Guest. It's themed as the Beast's castle. So when you walk in, it looks exactly like the movie. It's gorgeous in there. It's like yellow and it's beautiful. It looks so high end. In fact, there's like a huge like fake window where they project as if it's snowing outside and it's so beautiful. I think they changed it up when I went, it was snowing outside, but I'm sure like they change it every now and then. If you're someone who really likes to be immersed in Disney and feel like you're in a movie or feel just like completely surrounded by Disney, this is a perfect restaurant for you. It makes you really feel like you're inside the castle and you're in the movie, especially because a lot of the food is named after things from the movie. Like for example, they have a dessert called the gray stuff. If you know like the song very well, you know there's a part where the dishes sing, try the gray stuff, it's delicious, don't believe me, ask the dishes. So at Be Our Guest, you can actually try the gray stuff like Belle did in the movie. Another great thing about Be Our Guest is that you can actually meet the beast. This is this might be the only place where you can meet the beast. I'm not exactly sure. It's the only place where I've ever seen him. So it's a really great chance to 
meet him, have good food, and have an amazing experience. So there's different dining rooms you can go eat in, and one of them, one of the rooms is a room with the rose in it. I just think it's really cool. It's themed very well, and it fits the movie perfectly. So if you have young kids, it's perfect. If you don't, it's perfect. If you want good food, it's perfect. All around, this is an amazing restaurant. Number two on my list, Rainforest Cafe. I know technically it's not a Disney restaurant. You can have Rainforest Cafes in other states. It's its own restaurant, but they do have one in Animal Kingdom, which is the one we always eat at. And they have one in Disney Springs, which I've never eaten at, but I'm sure it's like the same exact thing. Like I said, as you can tell, I really pick favorites based on like atmosphere, not just food. And the atmosphere in Rainforest Cafe is just immaculate. <laughs> Rainforest Cafe is so cool. Every now and then they have thunderstorms where everything starts shaking and the animals go crazy. You hear animal sounds and it's just really cool. I've actually never been to Disney and not eaten there. It's my favorite. Oh. My second favorite, but it used to be my favorite. I think my first and second place are still tied because I don't think I could ever go to Disney World and not eat at Rainforest Cafe. Like, that would break my heart. Not only is it one of my favorite restaurants, it's one of my favorite things about Disney World. And I love it. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for. My number one favorite Disney restaurant is... Storybook Dining at Artist Point. Storybook Dining is in, once again, it's in Wilderness Lodge, which is the same resort that Whispering Canyon is in that I've eaten at before. And again, this is one of those restaurants that's themed amazing. You also get to meet a lot of characters, like a lot. And the food is to die for. I've actually only eaten here once so far, but now that I've eaten there, I couldn't ever picture myself not going back. The theme of Storybook Dining is that you're in like the Snow White movie. Like the restaurant itself kind of looks like you're in like the forest, like how Snow White was. And it's beautiful. The food is so well themed to the movie. For example, one of the desserts is a poison apple. <laughs> Obviously, it's not actually poison, but it looks like it. It's, I think it was like chocolate, and it looks like an apple and everything. They're small, like cake ball size, and it was so good. But that's just an example. All the food is themed based off things that are in the Snow White movie. So basically, they bring you the appetizers. You don't pick one. They bring you a few and then you pick an entree and then they bring you all the desserts. So my entree, I picked the pork shank and I crave it till this day. It was so good. I highly recommend that. So as I said, the food is amazing and the atmosphere is amazing, but what tops it off is that you get to meet like most of the Snow White characters. You meet Snow White herself and you meet a few of the dwarfs and you meet the evil queen. Meeting the evil queen was one of the best experiences I've had at Disney World. She was definitely my favorite character I've ever met. I can't wait to go again and like talk to her and take more pictures because I really enjoy talking to her. She's so like sassy and evil obviously but it was so funny talking to her. I was like dying laughing. So yeah, you go and you take pictures up with the photographer and meet the evil queen. And then the rest of the characters come to your table while you're eating. Another fun thing is not only do the characters come to your table and take pictures and stuff, but also they come out and have like a dance party where they're singing a song from Snow White and all the lights are like flickering and everyone's jumping and having fun. So this is one of those restaurants that again is very good for kids, especially if they love Snow White and all like the dancing and singing and having fun, but it's also good for adults because the food is so good and the atmosphere is gorgeous. I just can't get over how good of a restaurant that is. I'm not sure if the storybook dining is something that they've always had or if they change it up because the actual name of the restaurant is Artist Point but they do storybook dining there. So I'm not sure if they change it up or if it's always been like that, 
but hopefully it stays like that because I enjoyed it more than anything. So that finalizes my list. I hope it was very helpful. Comment what you think about some of my restaurants. Some of the restaurants that I picked aren't Disney favorites at all, but there's just things that I enjoyed about them and my family enjoys about them. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments. I'll try and answer. I will be coming out with more Disney themed videos because I do love talking about Disney. I love booking Disney trips and I know a lot about it. So again, I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you use it when booking your trips for some guidance. So thank you for watching. Bye.